Mikey is sensually dr sipping his coffee there. Because it's hot. It's in a jar. <laughs> it's hot everywhere. That's how you know it's hot in California. Mike's drinking coffee out of a jar. You gotta you survive gotta. at this point. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Mike. <laughs> I'm Nick. And I'm Steph. Delicious. We're back another 10 v 10. Yes. Us versus BGG, where we take uh, some kind of topic on BGG, some kind of mechanic, sometimes it's a designer, publisher, that kind theme. of stuff. A theme. And then we find our top 10 games collectively between the three of us, and then pit it against BGG's top 10 games. Right. So the top 10 games that you all have ranked this high at home, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. And Seth, what do we have today? Oh my gosh. Uh, we're playing drafting games, or we're talking about drafting games, which I love. Yes. Right. We, we discovered it's kind of a broad <laughs> yeah. uh, topic. Like, there's many things that can be considered drafting. We're going to mostly, at least on our list, be talking about kind of classic, what I would consider classic drafting, where you get a hand of cards, yeah. and we'll be doing card games specifically. Yes. We might do dice and things later. Where you get a hand of cards, you get to choose one of those cards, and you pass your cards to somebody else, and things kind of move around the table. Yeah. So that's kind of our classic drafting. There are many kind of ways. Yeah, there's you like can dice consider. drafting, there's tile drafting. It's like one of those Everything things drafting. where and there's a lot of options. Each person gets to take one. That's drafting. And so it's one of those things. It's kind of a it's a much more broad when I think of drafting, is I always think of like the sushi goes the where classic. it's classic. The Seven Wonders classic drafting, but it's like, oh yeah, it actually kind of encompasses a lot of different games. Right. So like I said, or like Nick said, we're gonna be seeing if our collective taste, the three of us, Match probably doesn't the taste of the folks of, that use Board Game Geek, and these are things you can do from home. You can rank uh, games if you really like a game, you can make it a ten. If you really don't like it, you make it a two or a one or whatever you want, and write reviews and the whole thing. So you can participate in in changing the rankings of games on Board Game Geek. Yeah. So Steph, are you ready? Are you ready? You ready to draft this list? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and get into uh, BGGs at number ten. BGG, your number 10 is ranked 106 overall, and that is Inish. That's right. Which is, uh, again, I don't really know much about it. I know I really like the art. It's got like cool like, Celtic art. You've played it, though. I, I have not played I've it. I've played it's, it, and it's I don't know if really, Stephanie, you've played it. Yeah, it's really neat. I mean, I played it the S, and it was released at a table, and I don't remember much about it. I just remember area right. control. I yeah, guess yes. there was drafting somewhere in there. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, so in this game, it's kind of this interesting thing of, uh, I played it with a couple of buddies who know the game better than I do, and it's this weird thing of like, there's only a handful of cards in the game. There's yeah. really very few cards, and you're drafting among these cards, so it's kind of this thing where you really get to know the cards very well, and you start to be tactical with how you're using them, and I think you can draft stuff and then uh, a card that you've kept prior, you can sort of swap out with something else and it goes kind of back into the hand that's getting drafted around and you end up with these different cards that allow you to move pieces out onto the board and do some area control stuff. But it is uh, kind of fascinating in that it's, it's limited in the amount of cards that yeah. are around and it's really about getting as familiar with those as you can versus maybe a, um, a larger or simpler drafting game uh, where she's just kind of set collection or something like that. So it was, it was. I would love to try it again because it was very interesting. Yeah, yeah. very different. But uh, I liked it. Yeah, I've cool. always wanted to try it. It looks cool. So yeah. Yeah, and it's very pretty. So there you go. That's Inish. Yeah. Nice. Number ten. Our number ten is Terraforming Mars. Now you could play this game without drafting, but I think a majority you of the can. people love to play it with the drafting mechanic. Yeah, yeah, we we kind of were like because drafting slows the game down a decent amount because sure. like people then are thinking about their cards and so we're always like nope, no one's drafting because this game's already kind of long and so we're <laughs> just gonna not draft at all. Um, but especially if we're playing two player now, we definitely always draft because it doesn't take too much more time and it is nice because you get to see more cards and. One thing I will say about Terraforming Mars, which kind of can suck, especially if you're not drafting, is you're like, okay, I'm gonna go really heavy into this one thing, and then you just don't draw any cards that help you with that yeah, strategy. No you're kind of like, or something. cool, that was my entire plan, and I've been setting up for that, and that didn't happen. So drafting does help that, because there's just, you get to see way, way, way more cards. But yeah. it's Terraforming Mars, right? I mean, it's good. It's good. With or without the draft, it's great, but I think the drafting does add a level yeah. of, of kind of you know, uh, tactics and things. So that's here for Mars, our number 10. Yay. All right, let's get into BGG's number nine. Yay. 
So number nine just hit the top 100 at 100, and that is Isle of Cats. Too bad their Kickstarter didn't do great. I know, you really wish it could Too bad the that. last Kickstarter didn't <laughs> it do did very insanely well, good. No, it, it did really well. good. Isle of Cats is great. It's just, we talk about it, I feel like it comes up a lot, because it's got a lot of little stuff in it. Well, but like, it's that thing of like, Steph kind of predicted the, the, the you rise. You did, Steph. The <laughs> rise of Isle of Cats. The before, great oracle of everyone Steph, else. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. like, predicted the future. Yeah, so I Steph, did. what do you like about Isle of Cats? Because you, again, you were there before everybody. Yeah, really, They helped spread the word. Yeah, I mean, th this game just has a lot of things I love. Drafting, tile placement, the polyominoes, all that good stuff. Yeah. And it's, like, fairly easy and quick. There's just so many cards. So, again, you can't really plan for specific cards to show up because there is so many. But, um, you know, you can kind of hopefully draft accordingly. And, you know, if you see somebody want something, you just, hate draft it. And th that happens a lot in drafting games, though. <laughs> Yes. That yes. Is, that is it can be element. mean. It can be very yeah, mean. It's yeah. like, I don't necessarily need this, but I know they do. So I'm not going <laughs> to let them have that. Um, but I, I think the card drafting allows for so many different things to appear. Like there's uh, kind of like special action cards. There's uh, lessons. There's private and public lessons. And then there's all the green cards, which give you uh, baskets to mm -hmm. capture or say rescue uh, cats and things. Capture. And so the fact that like if there wasn't card drafting, I think it'd be hard to have so many style yeah. Of oh, like yeah. cards, but that allows you because there's just so many more things moving around, yeah. and yeah. It also helps you ha have more players. I think with the expansions, you can play like five or six players, maybe even. So yeah. it's uh, it's nice. I think the drafting really adds an element. And when I went to go play it, I didn't know that that was oh really kind of the main thing you're doing. Yeah. I just figured, yeah. oh, cats are going in. There's polyominoes. Like yeah, but how do you get the cats? And I was like, oh <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of a cool. nice thing that I actually really enjoy. I, really, I also I like is, um, yeah. that you don't have to buy all the cards. You know, you you, just, yes. you buy mm -hmm. the ones you want. And so you're spending yeah. your yeah. fish wisely and doing that. So uh, you see what you have at the end of the drafting phase, and then you decide based on what you have. So I think that's pretty cool, yeah. too. Which yeah. I, I do like that. Terraform Mars is a similar thing where it's a, yeah. you, you get all these cards, but you don't have to keep all of them, which I think yeah. is, I think that's a really nice thing. Yeah, the idea also of paying to keep a card is cool because it forces you to be selective. It's like, I yeah. better use this. Yes. I just paid for it. Yes. So I, I love that in drafting. It's like, you can draft this, but then to keep any of these, you have to pay yeah. whatever is the currency. I do really like that. Yeah, it's a neat thing. And uh, and uh, again, like Steph called it early, but now it's in the top 100 of Board Game Geek, right at 100. I feel like that Kickstarter owes well. Steph at least half that money. I think so. <laughs> right? I should hit up. Like, uh, uh, City of Games and say, what's I feel like City of, hit, up, hit up Frank and City of Games. I feel like he owes you some money, Steph. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. At least the expansion, a, anyway. Come on, I know, right? I mean, I only gotta save those kittens, man. Uh, <laughs> that is number nine from Board Game yeah. Geek at 100 overall. And let's go ahead and get an hour number nine. Our number nine is. 370 overall, and that's, of course, Ginkopolis. Oh, my number of one game course. of all time. Of but course. since there are many mechanics in this game, drafting is just one element of it. But it yeah. is pretty important, even still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the drafting seems very important. Uh, so talk a little bit about how the drafting goes down and the cards function, because it's pretty cool. Yeah, so there's three types of cards um, that will help you expand the city in front of you. And if you, every card has multiple functions that you can use in, in different ways. So you can either like buy the card and put it into your tableau uh, by playing over the tile in, in the main area. Or you can just discard it to get small rewards like resources or points or something like that um, if, you, if you don't really have anything else to do. But what, whatever you do with that card will trigger your, your, your actions. So that, like I said, there's three actions that you could possibly do. And if you do one action, it will trigger all your bonuses for that one action. So you're using these cards to, you know, boost your engine, but also there's a lot of, like I said, a lot of hate drafting. Like if you see that they want this card or if, if you know it's a really great card, you're gonna wanna try and take that away from them, even if it means just discarding it for like standard resources. Um, yeah. Or you can play the expert variant, um, which is in the um, expansion, which you can include in the base game because it's just a rule change where you can keep a card from around around. You're only passing two cards instead of the three cards. And so keeping a card allows you to plan for the future you know, you have this card, now you can build it the next turn or whenever you have the resources to build it. So I think that's like, I really like this variant because it gives you a lot more control over what's happening. And um, yeah, this is really great. <laughs> Good choice, Ginkopolis. Got up here in the list. Got you know? it. I got up here. Steph's got to bring that love for Ginkopolis. Oh, yeah. Always. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into Board Game Geeks number eight. All 
All right, Borgen Geek, your number uh, eight is 87 overall, and that is Rising Sun. This is never a game. Played. Never played it. Never Don't really want to play it, personally. <laughs> so this is a game. This is, this uh, is the, something we have to try once. This is the second, do we? This is the second game, probably. In, uh, in Eric Lang's like Blood Rage, Rising Sun, and then right. Ankh was kind of I think the trilogy of these kinds of games. Um, right. And it, I mean, people really, really like this game. I know this game has like negotiation, which is my least favorite thing in board games. And so I've just never really wanted to play this game. But like, it's one of those ones, one of our good friends has it, and he really wants to play it with us. And so like, we will play it. Yeah. But I honestly don't know much about it, honestly. It's got big minis, big and long, and they're... I, yeah, trying it to seems way too long. Over. Is it not just way too long? It seems way too long. I don't know. Tell us in the comments what is Rising Sun. It's a beautiful production. Yes, like, I've seen like of course. Yeah, it's the Simon, upgraded yeah. full. I mean, it is incredible uh, looking. But uh, yeah, we just I don't, we don't know, y'all. We'll get around to playing it when we do. We'll Steph, let y'all know. Are you know gonna play it? it? Are you lining up? Like we have a, we have a perfect scenario to play it, and so it'll be good because it's people we like. Do you have anything <laughs> like that, or are you just like not interested? Yeah, I'm pretty much not interested. Like like Nick, <laughs> yeah, that's not, cool. just like negotiation is just. Not my thing, and I know that there can be a lot of backstabbing and stuff, and I'm like, oh, that makes yeah. me feel icky and not, yeah, I don't yeah. like when it happens to me, um, yeah. so I just, it's probably just not for me. <laughs> it does look beautiful, though. I want to negotiate silk for stone yeah. somewhere in the Mediterranean <laughs> on a road somewhere. A fixed, that's what I want. It's a fixed And I want rate. to be negotiating with the game, not other people. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Uh, but that's Rising Sun. Again, very well liked, beautiful production. We'll try it and we'll let you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's uh, number 87 overall in Board Game Geeks number 8. Let's go again to our number 8. Our number 8 is, what, 458 overall and it's called Sushi Go Party. Way too I'm low. Cute. I'm actually surprised that is as low as it is, honestly. Yeah, maybe it makes sense because it's kind of a light party game. This is like a this is as we were talking about. This Pure. is just a drafting yeah. game. It's all yes. about getting cards, and you take one of the sushi cards. All the cards have little amazing sushis in set collections. <laughs> certain cute. sushis want to be with certain other ones in different amounts. Yeah. And you take one card, pass your hand to the left or right, and then you get your new card from your you know opponent to your left or right, and then you take another card and you go on and on and on until everyone has played a certain amount of cards out that varies a little bit between uh, player count. But Sushi Go Party's nice because Sushi Go came out and you have they a are the, set they're the of, same game, you know. Yeah. It's like yeah, it's Sushi same. Go Party <laughs> has this thing where you can swap in different types of yeah, there's cards, lots of different types of cards. Yeah, it kind of goes yeah. a little bit in the way of Dominion, where it's like we can play with this set of cards or that set of cards, yeah. and so just add some variety, but while keeping the same exact vibe it's just set collection stuff yeah, so yeah and it's i mean it's great because it's just like it's it's appealing because it's sushi and it's cute little sushi That's so great. it's like it got great little art and yeah and it's just pure deck building i mean not deck building uh drafting and it's like it's pretty simple so yeah steph you like you like sushi yeah like sushi sure. are you sushi are you I a mean, sushi head i think my biggest problem is that I just take the card that's the cutest. And I don't that's really fair. Edamame every time. Those oh, little yeah. edamame are the cutest oh, thing. So it's cute. Amazing. So I don't usually win this game. That's fine. That's, that's all right. right. Boys, you're having a good time. It's about having the fun. That's you know, right. And uh, yeah, going the cute route with Sushi Go is, is You a, always win. It's then. a good yeah. pick. It's a good pick. Uh, but that's our our pick. Our pick, yeah. Sushi oh, there, go, there sushi is go party. a dice drafting game too, which might show up on the dice game too. Major, sure. I will say I like well. I do like sushi roll significantly more than I like there's sushi nothing else because it's a great pun because you make sushi rolls, you're rolling dice, sushi <laughs> rolls, <true>. just <laughs> brilliant. And the problem with with drafting games, we'll get them very quickly. It's like, especially with new people, it just like. People draft at different rates, so people like will draft a card and then put it over here, and just somehow someone ends up with less cards. Always. I don't know how <laughs> someone happen. ends up with less cards every single time. Whereas how? dice drafting is nice because they're they're bigger and chunkier. It's just easier to keep track of everything. But no, we'll probably talk about it later. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but sushi go, sushi go parties. Our number yeah. uh, eight. Either way, that's a classic game. So let's get to number seven. RBG, your number seven is 81 overall, and that is Architects of the West Kingdom. So this is mostly the kind of, another kind of what's considered to be drafting, is when you have like, kind of a tableau of cards, usually on the board or something you can choose from, and then you can buy cards or draft cards from there. That's also considered drafting. So there's a couple card, a couple games on, uh, the BGG list that fall into that category. Yeah, it is drafting technically, but again, not the sense that we think of, where we think of taking things, passing them yeah. down, and and because everyone out. technically has those options, and it's just right. like who gets what when. It's the so same that is drafting, presented in yeah. a different way, but yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so Architects West Kingdom is the first in the West Kingdom line that is now has Paladins and Viscounts of the West Kingdom. 
Um, yeah, it's it's I it's still probably my favorite of the three. I still yeah. really really like Architects of the West Kingdom. It's got an expansion, was great. Another expansion I think is coming out. I don't know. I like the West Kingdom games a lot. I think they're all really really incredible. And Architects is just it's cool. It's kind of like a worker investment game where you have a bunch of different spots and you have workers and no spots are ever blocked. But the more workers you put there, the stronger that spot gets. But then people can come and like take your workers off there and send them to jail for money. You know, a um, <laughs> bit bleak. It gets a little bleak. It's a lot, a little dark in there. It's a little, it's a little bleak. dark in there. Bit of commentary going on there, which I appreciate. But yeah, Steph, do you do you like the West Kingdom games, and which one is your fave? Oh yeah, mm. I do. I, it's been a while since I played Architects, but um, I definitely have been enjoying Paladins a lot and uh, my yeah. accounts recently. So uh, those those two are probably my favorite out of the three. But you know, I'm happy to play. Yeah, they're yeah, all super they're solid. All, they're so good. Yeah, like you said, Nick, the thing I like is that you can go to the same space multiple times and an action keeps getting better. Yeah. But you do end up sort of becoming a target for someone yeah. rounding up your, your workers yeah, and yeah. stuff. Uh, it's a super interesting game, but yeah, it's uh, it deserves its, its, its success, excuse me. My man. Uh, all the way up at 81. Very yeah, nice. It's real good. That's uh, BG's number seven. Let's go ahead and get into our number seven. All right, our number seven is 2941 overall, and that's called Boomerang. And now this is a series of games, guys. And there's the Australia where it started, and then now there's a sense. U.S. edition and a Europe edition. They all have slightly different rules, so you're playing slightly differently in each of them, which I think is fantastic. Um, another great Very thing cool. to just to mention is that they are available on Board Game Arena, and I highly recommend it uh, because it is Ooh. a drafting roll and write game. How could you not like that? What? Ooh. <laughs> I, what? All right. Explain yourself. All right. So why is there not a Trenton, New Jersey version? I know. It's That's so what I want. Good. Trenton, New Jersey specifically. The Jersey Shore <laughs> boomerang. Shouts out in chat for Trenton, New Jersey. <laughs> you know, as soon as it takes off, they'll do more, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Every um, city. It, it's a fantastic game. It's a standard drafting game where you have a hand of cards. You choose one. You put it down. You pass. And um, each time you're going to reveal a card and you mark it off on your little map of Australia or, or US or whatever. And um, yeah, you're trying to collect the different locations and then there's a whole bunch of symbols on them. So you're trying to collect different symbols or the same symbols depending on what you're doing. And uh, yeah, you just keep passing and passing and you do, I think it's four rounds and um, there's different scoring for all the symbols and um, there's a boomerang effect where like, it depends on the game you're playing, how it's scored, but the first card you played is face down, and then you flip it up at the end. The last card you get, the boomerang card, if it, you score the difference between the two cards. So if you play a one and you get a seven as the last card, you'll get, you know, six points. Oh, that's cool. So that, there's, like, Fun. that little scoring Ooh. at the end. So there's, there's each game has its own different unique rules, which I think is awesome. And, um, that's yeah, right. it's a nice little roll and write game. I, I, I really like it. <laughs> Yeah, I love especially when they do that. that where there's different versions of the games that are a lot of shared DNA with a little bit of a twist. Like Ticket to Ride obviously yeah. does this and, and a yes. lot of games. It's always nice where you get like, ooh, this is fun little, this familiarity, but this fun little new thing yeah. to, to kind of keep you interested. So that's really cool. And also some variety if you want to play this game. But yes, want to be which is always nice. time you can switch from this that one to that That sounds awesome. One. Yeah, I yeah. really want to try that. It's really cool. So that's Boomerang, our yeah. number seven. Seven? Yep. Sweet. Let's get into Board Game Geeks number six. So this is the second Agricola, so we'll keep the higher one. So this will actually be okay. Seven Wonders. Nice. All right. Uh, yeah. We got so close to something awesome. Because number six is 70, and it's Seven Wonders. We could have been seven, seventy, seven Wonders. That's your fault, BGG. Yeah. That's ridiculous. It's your fault. Be better. <laughs> it's your fault. Rank it slightly lower. It's very slightly for, lower. For convenient no, it should be rated purposes. higher. That's true. Don't should. lie, Steph. You know it's not showing up on our list. It would never show up on a draft. <laughs> I mean, list what? From us. <laughs> what? What? Right. <laughs> Seven one is. We probably won't talk about it later. Uh, but this is like the drafting game, right? Like oh, yeah. this is like King the of dominion draft. of drafting. Yeah, King. it's like it's it's it was one of the first, if not the first, and it's just like kind of the, the definitive. Version still you know? very talked yeah. about, still very well supported. Yeah. There's new content coming out. I mean, it's, this had a new version, a new like a second edition of it come yeah. out and stuff like yeah. that. So it's like, so yeah, people love it. And yeah, this is one of those kind of few games that we've heard non gamers who have like randomly played it. So like, oh, I played this. You like board games, right? And we're like, yeah, they're like, oh, I played this game. It's called like, you ever heard it's called like Seven Wonders? We're like, oh yeah, we've heard of it. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's it's one of those games that's kind of broken out a little bit, and it's great and deservedly so. It's awesome, you know. 
Yes. Yeah. So, Steph, do you want to talk just a little bit about it since it might be appearing later, just a little bit only? Just, gosh. Um, Cover your so only yeah. chance. It's my only chance. Oh, my God. No, it might not be. But, uh, yeah, I think I think it works great at all player counts. I mean, with two players, I usually play two boards each. Um, but I Ooh. know that, you know, Seven Wonders Duel is, like, taken over, which is as may not be on this list, but it probably should be on this list because I think it's rated higher. I, don't, I, I don't think even it is. Know. For some reason, that's not considered <laughs> drafting, which is a little confusing. But it, um, but it, it is, but it's, I mean, it is. <laughs> but I mean, sure. to, me, to me, it's this, it's the same way of drafting as Architects was Kingdom is drafting. Yeah. So, yeah. like, <laughs> who knows but how I, these lists get made. Exactly. But, um, you know, I actually prefer Seven Wonders all day to Seven Wonders Duel. And um, I just will always much rather play Seven Wonders. I love the, I love it. I just love everything about it. The more people you add, the more cards you add. So with five players, you're actually going to see new cards that you don't see with four players. And I just, I've played it a whole bunch. It's on Board Game Arena and it was on uh, Bretchfield Veld where I was playing it before it was on Board Game Arena. Uh, so, you know, it's always been, been one on. of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a classic, classic for a reason. You know, it's really cool the things you get to do where you build up this kind of resource production as you go uh, and then kind of build up awesome things, including yeah. the wonders of the world. Indeed. So it's just oh, a classic wonders. game. That's why it's uh, number six, inconveniently number six. Inconveniently on board game number Geek. six. Yeah. So close to the 777, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Let's get into let's get into our number six. We'll just put this behind us. Our number six is 1257 overall, and that's Tides of Madness, which I actually like better yeah, than madness. Tides of Time. So do we. Agreed. Yeah, and that's why it, it, we don't even, we, don't, we never played Tides of Time. They're basically the same game. It, uh, Tides of Madness has yeah. a little bit more going on. But this is actually a two-player only drafting game, which is yeah. always interesting to me. Being like, you did draft with just <laughs> two players? Interesting. Um, in this game, Tides of Time and Tides of Madness, you basically have these big, beautiful tarot-sized cards. They're really, really pretty art for like a little micro game. There's only like 20 cards in the whole game. And you're drafting, and on these cards, there'll be symbols, that you know, a couple different symbols, and then there'll be a scoring condition on every single card. Like, for every pair of green and red symbols, you'll get seven points or whatever. So you draft a card, you put it in your tableau, and you flip it up, and then you just draft until you each have drafted all the cards, and then you score them. And that's the Just game. That's yeah. the whole thing. And so, but then what happens is you score them, you mark the little score, and then you are going to get to keep one of your cards down on the table, and then one of the other cards you have, you get to throw out of the game. Right. And then you add a couple more cards to your back to a full hand, and then you draft again, and then now you have one card bigger tableau, score again, do the same thing, keep one, throw one out, get some more cards, do it a third time, and then that's the end of the game, you score, and then you find out who wins. Really, really fun, really, really simple, just works well. Now, Tides of Madness has like a Cthulhu theme to it, because <laughs> right. of course... And so there are some cards, the really powerful cards will have like madness on them. And so another win condition, or I guess in this case a lose condition, is if you get a certain amount of madness, you immediately lose. So one thing you can do is try and just make your opponent go mad. Just and it, you do that me. little bit of another win condition, another way to, another thing to think about just takes it to a whole nother level and makes it so much fun. It's nice. Sorry, I, I just talked. On just, my own, so. We're letting you go. Y'all talk now. The passion. <laughs> I mean, everything Nick said. Steph, you got anything to add? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I just love that added insanity mechanic that they they added for the this madness game, and because um, it's the only way I can win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a viable it thing. It really is a way to win, and you are tempted to get some madness because if you gain the most madness in a round, you can either remove one of your madness tokens or score four points. So yeah. you kind of want to like. Play you with fire a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so it just does some like fun little things, and and the 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 fact that it's you can I get I get turned insane all the time. Every single time. So I just yeah. like literally lose just all, my, all the badness. Yeah. yeah, and it's cool. It's cool to like have this extra little layer to kind of manage, maybe use to your advantage. Maybe it'll give you power, more powerful cards, but at what cost? You yeah. Know? So it's it's a cool. Yeah, it's a it's small a cool little thing. micro game. Yeah. Beautiful art. Yeah. It's just great. It's really great. It's the Cthulhu game for us. Yes, indeed. That's it's right. our favorite Cthulhu <laughs> game right there. Yeah, probably. Nice yeah. and small, easy peasy. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's number six, six yeah. for us. Ooh. I can remember numbers. Uh, number five for Board Game Geeks coming up. Number five is number 56 overall BGG, and this is... On Mars. On Mars. Now, we played On Mars once, and I honestly, I couldn't tell you what we did. It was a while <laughs> ago at this point, and I don't remember what happened or what you do in the you game. You did some stuff. 
on Mars. You did, I did some stuff. Or sometimes you're up in the atmosphere. You're up in like the yeah, sky. Yeah, you're, you're shuttling back and forth yeah. like, between the planets. Steph, have you played on Mars? I have not, but Lacerda kind of leaves you with the feeling that you just ex- des- described. Where like, I played that. What happened? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of things happen. There's technology stuff. Yeah. There's like a sort of a share. It's one of the things like growing tech tree. I honestly could not tell you what you did in that game. I, it's, I had a good time though. Me too. Like I, I wanted to play around. again, but like I supposedly I there's drafting there's, somewhere in there. I don't remember that part. I feel like you're drafting planets. I should play it at some point. It's on the list. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's definitely worth playing once. Like it's, I feel like for a Lacerda game, it's fairly easy to get into. For a Lacerda game, that does not mean it's an easy to get into game necessarily. True. But you know, given it's like sushi given go party games, on Mars, the same basically the same. Yeah. Yeah. Sushi so, go party um, on Mars. <laughs> that's easy. Yeah, there's drafting in both. There's little sushis on Mars yeah. and stuff. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's a cool game. But yeah, so if you remember the drafting, put it in the comments below because we don't remember. I know it's not our list, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's, right. it's not. We haven't played everything on the BGG list. Yeah. So yeah, that's number uh, five for BGG. Cool game. Want we'll to play it again? Yeah. Let's get into our number five. Our number five is 1229 overall called Oanami, which is a nice little drafting game, a card game, a small box. Uh, just came out from Pandasaurus Games and uh, with along with like, you know, the game and all, you know, same size box, the N- yeah, NXP yeah, yeah. games. Um, and so this game, you're drafting these cards two at a time and you're adding them to your tableau where you're. You can add cards to three different columns, but they can either go to the bottom or the top of any column. So you're trying to manipulate your stacks to have different values so you're not making huge jumps because the value of cards goes from like one to 130 or something. So you don't want to put like a 50 next to a 20 because that's a huge jump and that you're now closing that region off. You know what I mean? And so you're Mm. drafting these types of cards that will score in different times of the game. So pink cards only score at the end of the game. Blue cards score every round. Green cards score in the second and third round. And gray cards score in the third round. So if you're drafting a gray card in the first round, well, it's not really going to benefit you until the third round. So maybe you collect blue cards. Or you just collect Mm. pink cards the whole time. And all the pink cards, and the more pink you have, the bigger the score will be. That, you know, so it's like, what, what do you draft? Mm. You kind of look at what other people are doing, so you try and do other things. Um, and, yeah, you draft in two at a time. I like when you draft two at a time. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fun. Right. Yeah, that's really that's a really neat thing to do. Again, play for, like, now or play for later. Yeah. Now, my question for you, Steph, is have you mastered this game to the level of which you have mastered the mind? Because you play <laughs> on a whole, in a whole different a whole universe. universe. Yeah. And so, have, have you have you gotten anywhere close to that level of mastery with this? To be fair, they are completely different games, and I I don't mm, think I have I mastered know. anything like I've mastered the mind. <laughs> you really have. You really have. It it's is astonishing. Another level. I cannot fathom how you do that. I don't know. I yeah. don't get it. I don't know. Maybe I'm too. You guys just need to play like a hundred games. Just one day, just play a hundred games in a row, and you'll you'll get it. You'll just you'll get guess, that. Yeah. You'll get your we'll timing down, and then you'll eventually get there. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Uh, that is awesome. That is our number five. five? Oh, Hanami. Let's go ahead That's and jump <laughs> Number four is a game that we kind of already touched on a little bit. It's number 33 overall, and that is Blood Rage. So mm-hmm. this is uh, Mike's favorite game. Um, and uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Mike is not a huge fan of this I've game. been burned by the drafting too much. He has, he has. This is a game uh, where uh, it's an area control game, but you are drafting these god cards, and the god cards can, um, they do a whole bunch of different stuff. Oh, yeah. But one thing that's uh, in this game that can kind of burn you is if you're in a big fight with somebody, they could be, you have, you're playing these cards that you've drafted, and you, there's a lot of different gods in the game, and you if you want to focus on a god or two, because they... All the cards then work together. But there's some cards, we're playing like Loki cards, where you actually want to lose the fight. So you might be going to this big fight, and everyone's like, okay, we're going to do this. You're like, ah, oh, actually, I wanted to lose the entire time. And it's, it's, it's a mechanic that we're not a massive, massive fan of. And Blood Rage is one of those games where if you play Blood Rage a lot, kind of like Inish, if you know the game, if you know what cards there, know the game, you're just going to crush. And so yeah. it's never been our favorite. I don't mind Blood Rage. I'm happy to play it. 
But uh, it's never been. I feel like we're just just all we just it. play it too infrequently. So it's always yeah. we're kind of playing our first game yeah. again. Yeah, it's always it's just it's never always been. a moment I played like you really gave up that Heimdall card. I'm like, I don't know, is it important? <laughs> You're like, this is the best card in the game. Whoop whoop, and I'm like, okay, my bad. I don't know. Just got yeah. So Blood Rage is heated out of Yggdrasil. People again. people love it, you know, and it's and I don't mind it. I'll play it, but yeah, it's and Steph, what do you think about Blood Rage? I've only played it the one time, and it was kind of a long slog, uh, so I never really returned to it, but I, I do like the drafting. I mean, it's actually, this is a drafting Even. game, so I, I would, you yes. know, yes. while there is very a board so. and everything, you are drafting these cards, and it is very important on how you do yes. so. So I, I totally get behind, like, if you're playing with people who know, you're going to just get crushed. <laughs> yeah. And that's something that I didn't know going into the game that like, oh, the drafting is the thing. Yeah, it, really it seems is. like it's all air control. It's really not. Yeah, getting yeah. those cards is is how you do everything. And so it's like, if I can get that my head around it and play it more, I think I'd get over that hump. But I've just been like destroyed so many times. I'm like, I just have. Yeah. It's like not rushing play? back. It's one of those things with board games in general. It's like, I don't, there's so many board games in the world that I don't feel the need to like play games I don't like. To yeah, hopefully like to hopefully like them someday. Yeah, that's you know true. what I mean. I understand that some people are like, no, you got to give another chance. And I, I think that's a totally valid thing. But it's like one of those things where it's like, if you're not really enjoying a game, don't just keep playing it to hopefully force yourself to enjoy. It. Like, that's just true. play something else. Like, just play what you enjoy. So it's like, if Blood Rage is not your thing, just don't play Blood Rage. It's not any knock on who people who like Blood Rage. That's and great. I love don't. Blood Rage. Awesome. That's amazing. Go play Blood Rage. It's great. I'm gonna go play something else. You know. Yeah, I just want to comment on that little point there for for real quick. But um, I I hear you and I, I get that a lot because I play a wide range of games. Like I play a lot yes. of games. And so people are like, well, you don't play more than once. I'm like, I did, I shouldn't have to play more than once. If it if it's not presented to me in a way that I I feel like I want to play again. Well, yeah. Then they're like, well, you didn't use all the extra stuff that it's supposed to be much better with. I'm like, well, that should have been in the base game to begin with. <laughs> like, that's, that's fair. Yeah. So totally. it's just, it's just there's so you know, many there's games to try. so many games, and if it doesn't grab me enough to try it again, well, then it's just that that's how it is, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I, totally I think that's totally fair. It's like, hey, enjoy the hobby on the terms you want to enjoy. If yeah. you want to try a game five times before you make your final analysis of what you think of it, that's great too. Like, it's yeah, there's sure. no right or what, wrong way. Whatever, yeah, however, however you, you want to do it. Yeah, yeah. But I think we're all more in that similar it's camp. Like, if it doesn't grab me, I'm moving on. I, yeah, we yes. got <laughs> we got games to play. Yeah, it's like it's it really it's like there's too many games. It's like it, yeah. you, you got to make a good first impression. You know. Yeah. And to that point, I don't regret ever playing. Blood no, Rage. no, not no, at all. I will play it again. I don't regret it, but I'm just like, eh, so I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna like try to dig in to find yeah. to find my happiness with it. You know, it's like yeah, we got deep on this one. I like yeah, it. Deep on y'all. Yeah, yeah, way to get. Let's have philosophical conversations. <laughs> That's right. a beautiful thing. I like that. On that note, I think yeah. we should get into our number four. Our number four. Yeah. Our number four um, is 100, which we already talked about, and that is. The Isle of Cats, which we all it's love. It's great. It's still we do fantastic. Steph, did you play the? Uh, did you ever play like the? Uh, I guess now it's called the Explore and Draw, but like the Roll and Write version of it, the remote edition. Oh no, I never tried that. I saw. I actually saw oh. it being played on Twitch, but I never got into it. It's so. it's really fun. It's uh, uh, it's they did like a, a remote version of it when COVID hit. They're like, yeah. hey, we found a Using way to play, play this game remotely as long as one person has it, everyone can play, and it's really really fun. And now they've turned it into like a full blown roll and write. Um, and it's it's really, really fun. I actually like it almost as much as I like the normal game of Isle of Cats, which is nice because now we essentially have two versions of the same game. Yeah. But I would say give it a try, so because it's it's you yeah. like rolling rights too. It's you'll really put, you'll fun. put basically a tableau of of cat and uh, treasure <laughs> and lesson cards, and then you'll choose a column out of that, which will give you like three cards worth of stuff that might have cats, it might have a lesson. If you have a lesson, you check off a little side. Uh, page that'll have that and you're drawing in your cats on your boat so it's very much Isle of Cats yeah. but it's a cool just like slightly especially uh, if you're like I want to play Isle of Cats but I want to play it a little quicker because we don't have enough yeah. time or something like that and it's, it's like, also you can play it with an unlimited amount of people yes it's really fun though. I would suggest definitely trying it Yeah, that, that sounds really home, great yeah cats. definitely something to look at and I want to play yeah. the expansion obviously of course, uh, of course. obviously get them yeah. kitties and them beasts and things yes. yeah. <laughs> sounds so cool. Isle of Cats is great I'm glad we it's on it. y'all's list. Uh, it's on our list. It's on y'all's list. It's it's yeah. really great. It, it deserves really its praise for sure. Yeah. Um, so that's our number four, four, like we talked about earlier. We quite like it. We quite like many iterations of Isle of yeah. Cats. Uh, so let's get into Board Game Geeks number three. All 
All right, BGG, your number three is a classic. It shows up on a lot of different lists, and that is Agricola. It is ranked 32 overall. Still doing Still, great. Uh, Agricola actually technically showed up on this list twice. We took one of them out. <laughs> Anytime we talk about Agricola on one of these lists, it has shown up twice. Both two different versions. Yeah. This is the new edition new. and the old edition, and both are in the top 100. <laughs> right, so. right, right, right. <laughs> but this is the higher of the two. This is the original one in 2007. Yeah. And Agricola is, um, we've still never played it. Still, I still want to play it at least once, honestly. But this is the big Uwe game. You know, Caverna came afterwards, Feast for Odin, all these kind of big Hallertau, all these different big farming games came after it. And yeah. as far as I can tell, they're all better. I mean, <laughs> maybe. Just, what we understand is that Agricola is slightly more punishing yes. than the rest. I don't know about that. I do really want to try it. Yeah, yeah, another thing I just want to comment on is that you don't have to play with drafting. Um, it's just that you get cards at the beginning and then people generally like to draft them. Um, so yeah. I wouldn't really consider this a drafting game personally. Uh, and actually, it's what really ruined the game for me the first time because everybody knew what they were doing. And it's one of those situations yeah. where I i don't know, I just took cards and it doesn't matter. And it mm. did matter, of course. <laughs> of course, so, right? Right. Um, right. That's yeah. Tough. But so, you know, you just have to, you know, go in with the caution of that or help a new player draft the right cards or just don't draft and just get what you get and then you're you have yeah. them the whole game so um yeah you know it is a punishing game and definitely my probably my least favorite uber rosenberg game yeah right and that's not to say it's bad obviously. no it's no just, not uh, at all and i do i really i honestly really really want to try it just because yeah. i do like every big uve farming game i'm like cool this is now in my top 50 you know, so I it's know. just like, it's one of those things where I'm like, I, I really want to try like kind of like the, the original and stuff like yeah. that. As much as we jokingly kind of kind of rag on it a little yeah, bit. I wanna, but it's I just know. like, I, I do know really want to play it, yeah. you know? But yeah, but then Hallertau though. Oof. Hallertau. Oof. Steph, you played Hallertau? Like, oh, I love it, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So, it's so good. Stinking good. <laughs> I, I, lo I love, love almost oh. all Uwe Rosenberg games, so. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, pretty much us too. Yeah, it's, yeah. Pretty much any time something comes out, I'm like, I'm listening. You say Big we're on a farm again? <laughs> you Let's say we're, go. There are peat bogs again, Uwe? Yes. Oh, uh, please. Don't mind, don't mind yeah. if I uh, do. <laughs> <laughs> but Agricola is uh, obviously the classic, super right? classic. Yeah. Uh, we would not have a lot of games, I think, if Agricola never first kind of paved the way for many yeah. more. Uh, from Uve himself, so yeah, he would have stuck to Bonanza, you know. That's right, you know. So, so it's for the better. We all we all benefited from Agricola. So that's number three uh, from Board Game Geek. Let's go ahead and get into our number three. Our number three is three hundred and three overall, called Bunny Kingdom. Yay! It's so cute. Bunny Kingdom's great. <laughs> yeah, Bunny Kingdom's super cute. It's it's great. Yeah, it, is. it gets pretty gnarly yeah. as you're going and stuff, and all the the. Remember the last round just being like insane with yeah. stuff going on. So talk about it a little bit, stuff. Yeah, so, so this game is, is an area control game, and there's basically two types of cards. There are scoring cards that you'll do at the end of the game, and then there are location cards where the board is a big grid, and like you're looking at G1 or whatever, you put your little bunny there if you play that card kind of thing. And so you're you're tr you're drafting each turn, you're, you're, before you pass, is you're drafting two cards. So you, again, I like when you draft two cards, because then you're like, don't have to make really hard decisions. You can choose yes. two yeah. of the yeah. straight you're like, cards. Oh, it's a little easier. <laughs> yeah. It's a little easier. And so the scoring cards just put to the side, and then, you know, you'll play your location card, and you're going to need special requirements, possibly with a castle or something. But you're just trying to make these little fiefs, I think is what they call them. And then you're grouping, yeah. yep. you're grouping your little bunnies together, if you can, to try and make big groups or fiefs. And, uh, yeah, it's a nice... It, it's a fun game with amazing art and i haven't tried the expansion yet but it has big rainbow so i know i want to yeah right. we haven't tried the expansion uh, yet i want to try it. one of our friends has this game and, and we finally got it played it's been a little bit while now but i really i was going into it being like all right like we'll see yeah. i just for whatever reason i thought i wasn't gonna like it i don't entirely know why but and i really liked it yeah <laughs> yeah it was really neat i would love to come back to it I'd like to see what that expansion offers yeah. and stuff um so if any of you played the expansion drop in the comments Let below what do you think do you recommend it obviously it looks great we're taking off look alone, the rainbows and stuff. Yep. We're, get, we're going for <laughs> it. I'll buy, but, uh, I'll buy a game of the looks alone yeah, any day of the week. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Judge that book right by its cover. You better you believe know? it. Uh, so that's our number three. Yep. Bunny Kingdom. Super cool game. Really, uh, really fun and interesting, and it ramps up nicely. Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into Board Game Geeks number two. All right, BG, your number two is number 20 overall, and that is Wingspan. Now, this yeah. shows up on every list. I feel like. And this is the kind of card drafting like Architects West Kingdom where there is three cards in a little 
tray thingy, and when you draw a card, you can get them from there, and that's considered drafting. Yeah, you're not. This isn't drafting classic. Yes, this isn't drafting like the ne the sense that we generally consider drafting. But right. technically, that is you drafting cards because those cards could be taken by anyone. Yeah. and it's wingspan. People love it. It's great. We do, we finally just played. We picked up the two expansions. Yes, we've always heard the Oceanic expansion. Really like, kind of like fills in some of the gaps and like really. Uh, uh, helps the game out a lot and, and just makes it even better. And I, I agree, I really, really like the expansion. Yeah, I think it's really uh, neat and just adds more cool stuff to an already like really solid game. So, yeah, Steph, uh, have you played any of the expansions? I haven't played with the expansions. I just played the base game. I'm usually teaching it, in fact. So yeah, right, I just, of course. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, simple, the game is, is, <laughs> is good for what it is and it's beautiful, of course. So people seem to love it. Yeah, it's a solid it's package. Yeah, with the, with the Oceana, Oceana expansion, I think it really bumps it up. So yeah. if, if yeah, I think it took like a really solid game to like a really, yeah. really great game. Okay, um, cool. By balancing out some things. Yeah, it's yeah. good. So uh, that's number two. Two. Number two. From Board Game Geek. Wingspan's always good to show up on a list. It's a great game. Yeah. It deserves its praise. Uh, but let's go ahead and get an hour number two. Our number two is 1523 overall called Key Flow. Oh my goodness. I love the key games from Richard Brees. So good. Yeah, right. And a key flow, I feel like that's like, this is like, this is specifically the Three Amigos evangelism game. I feel like we find every reason to put this on a list. Yeah. And like, play key flow. Of course. <laughs> and you should play key flow. A lot of the games in the key series, Steph is, is obviously much more uh, well versed in the key games as a in whole. General. Yeah, for sure. And then key flow is one that we all have really enjoyed. And it, it takes a uh, key flower um, and turns it into a card drafting version of that game That's that great. moves and flows really well. I see what you did there. I you know what? I'm not going to lie. I didn't even see that. <laughs> I didn't I didn't pre-plan that. That's how that. good of a pun it was. You said you that and I was like, God, I'm so clever I don't even notice. Uh, but it does flow really well. <laughs> so it helps. It lives up to its name. Yeah, it's it key. does. It's the, the key to flow is to play key flow. Indeed, indeed. It's great. So Steph, what, what do you love about key flow? I love the little cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are skinny cards. You're making up your little tableau of like how your farm is looking. I think that's kind of cool. And, um, you know, I think they did condense Key Flower into this nice little card game really well. And I, I actually think I like it more than Key Flower. Um, I do. Just yeah, because it is faster. And you're. I like drafting as a mechanic more anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, it, I think it just smooths over I think so too, yeah. some of the more. Like, Key Flower is, like, really a strategic game, and there's a lot of things you can do where the color meeple you put down dictates, like, only this color can be used, and so you yeah. can be, like, really mess with different people, which is, like, great for, like, what it is. Key Flow just sort of, like, streamlines some stuff. It's a little less in-your-face messing with each other, um, and so I think it just caters to our yeah, play feel style better. We don't sure. like games in particular. It's like, I'm going to mess up your thing. I'm like, let me build my thing and yeah. just see if I can build things better than you, you use can build your things. neighbors. You can use your neighbor's buildings in their farm kingdom, whatever it's yeah. called. Um, and you can use their stuff, but you just use their stuff. You don't have to tell them you're using it. They don't. That, that doesn't mean that that's right. like exhausted for them. You just go like, oh, I'm going to use that card over there and stuff like that. And you just, it, which is really nice because it, it makes your little estate or whatever better because you also have everyone else's. So if yeah. you, for whatever reason, couldn't draft like a card that gives you stone, I could use your stone building or I could use Steph's gold building or something like that. And that's really, really nice. Yeah. Um, and so you still get that kind of that kind of interaction, but it's it's kind of more solitary in a, in a way. And I, I really like yeah. it. Yeah. It works really well and again, imitates a key flyer going through like a year and you're building up uh, kind of production buildings and then yep. you're trying to produce goods and then get them to different places ultimately to uh, score cards which are um, gathered from the winter season. You have yeah. end game scoring stuff. So yeah. it's really about building everything up, maximize that scoring, and then um, spending a, about yeah, as long win. as you spent playing, you spend that much time trying to figure out like what's the best score I can get yeah, out of what I've Scoring built. is rough, it's fun. Yeah, it's cool. But uh, Key Flow is really fun. Uh, there's great like upgraded bits on uh, Board Game yeah. Geek that work for Key Flower or Key Truth. Flow, which is like also nice. And there's a little bit of click clacky there, nice. uh, which is fantastic. <laughs> so it's our number two. Let's yeah. get into yeah. Board Game Geek's number one. This is number one on any list that it can be a number one on, because that's Terraforming Mars, because it's number ranked number four overall. So it is, it's just gonna be there. Unless like Gloomhaven, Pandemic Legacy, or Brass Birmingham is there, it's gonna be Terraforming Mars, and it is. We talked about it before. It's great, uh, and then most people prefer to draft the cards, but we yes. kind of went over it. It's number one. Um, 
yeah, people love Terraforming Mars. They just, it's been one of the most popular games the last like 10 years. Got to yeah. get that planet whipped into shape yeah. and stuff. And and yeah, that's the main thing that we heard early on was everyone saying like, you have to draft. It just makes the game <laughs> yeah. a lot better. And I do agree with that. I, I agree, yeah. Um, so yeah, we talked about Terraform Mars already. I think we'll scooch on to ours. It's which done. Maybe it's been mentioned also. No, nope. but it's gonna be fine. It definitely hasn't. <laughs> Let's nope. get our number one. <laughs> Our number one is 70 overall, and that is, of course, Seven Wonders. Where would we be without what? Seven Wonders? Not here. What? Probably <laughs> drunk in a gutter somewhere. That's oh, my right. goodness. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Steph, good. you, yeah, you talk about this more than just about anybody. Yeah. Uh, and you already mentioned it, but okay, so this is the question. So you love Seven Wonders. Yes. Favorite expansion, most essential. Mm. Armada. Go. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Armada, get them ships going. Moving ships around and things. Is that what's going on with that so one? So with, with, with Armada, you have a, a board and to the side. You're doing a little bit more. So every time you draft a card, depending on the color, you might be able to move your ship up. And your ship might affect other, everybody at the table. It might get you a, a small bonus. And you're trying to get your ships all the way to the top to get the best bonuses and everything. So not only mm. do, does it affect everybody certain things but at the end of each round there's going to be a combat amongst the table so you are getting more involved with everybody at the table um which i know a lot of people complain about you're not seeing you're only seeing your neighbors but armada really i think helps that a lot um and i just absolutely adore it but i i have to say i love all the expansions even babel i know but it's like i got the <laughs> second edition with all the new expansion and everything i'm like what do i keep do i keep both of them do i keep one of them do i what do i do so right now it's like i'm keeping both i'm keeping my original all my <laughs> promos all my cards and i'm like uh, and i'm gonna keep all the new stuff too because it's pretty and shiny and love it i respect <laughs> yeah it is yeah. we spent some time you know <laughs> You spent some time collecting yeah. this. Yeah, so I, I don't I don't mind you one bit keeping everything. You might as well. It's yeah, your do stuff. you. Do you. Um, yeah, I mean, Seven it, Wonders it, it is, is my great. number five overall on all my favorite yeah, I mean, games. It's, I love Seven it's, Wonders. <laughs> It and really that's a, it's not that like no like anyone's list is more valid than anyone else's, but I mean, number five on Steph's yeah. list is, means <laughs> it's five out of like Steph plays all the so games. many it's games. Clearly like, so the best it drafting matters. game. If you want a good drafting experience, this is the game for you. That's the game right there, and Bro, it is. You heard it really it. is. Like it works really well. Yeah. The ramp up again. How in those? There's a reason eras. why it's stuck around this long. Yeah, it's not a new game. I mean, it's like yeah, it's like it's stuck around this long for a reason. Yeah, and it's really just cool with like how many expansions have come out. Like there's so much room to kind of explore within that mechanism yeah. in terms of like the world and stuff and the way they built it. So it's just, it's one of those that like is classic for a reason, deserves its success, um, helped pave the way for a lot of games that came after and still works really well. Yeah. I mean, I think it's 11 years old at this point, which is not brand new, you know, oh, and it still oh is <laughs> being supported and being played as if it was a 2016 or, or beyond release. I yeah. feel like those games get played at a, at a higher clip but Seven Wonders is right there. Yeah. No problems whatsoever. There you go. It could be because I started right when Seven Wonders came out. I started playing these games, all the oh. strategy games. So it was one of the first games that I really loved. And so it's just held there for me. And so basically yeah. when Seven Wonders came out, that's when I learned about games in general. So it has that like Yeah, that's nice so cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's I feel like people have that for your first kind of one of your first games. Like Pandemic is always going to be high up on my sure. top list. Yeah. Even though at this point like we don't play it that much anymore. I think there's like better versions of Pandemic and I think there's better co-op games out there. But it was the game that got us into the hobby. So yeah. it's like I can't divorce that completely from it. And so of it's course. like it's always probably going to be in my top 50 because I'm like I just Exactly. It's it's got me here, you yeah. know. So it's like that's yeah, really like cool. I, I think that's totally a valid thing, honestly. Yeah. And it's cool that in both our instances and certainly yours stuff like the game that helped get you here is just has continually had support and new yeah. things coming and yeah. there's new addition. It's it's kind of rad that you get to really celebrate and re-celebrate yeah. this thing that was so instrumental into making you a board game. I mean, yeah. once really upon cool. a time when I, when I, you know, whenever I think maybe cities came out or something, I'm like, so what's the plan for more expansions? And like, well, there should be seven expansions with seven wonders that that's, that's what they were planning at the time. So I don't know if that's still a thing. I hope it is obviously. Right. Yeah, of course. Cool. You That'd never cool. know. Be fitting. <laughs> hey, yeah. People keep buying them, so I mean, I, I will don't keep see why buying they wouldn't, them. you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so Absolutely. it's like, yeah, Steph's in it. She's yeah. in it to win it. In, in <laughs> forever. 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 Uh, so that's our list, everybody, right there. Drafting games, card drafting specifically. Yeah. Uh, for us. Yeah, we'll probably um, do like dice drafting as well, because yeah. that's like a whole 
there's a lot of games to do dice drafting as well. So that's right. Um, so we'll probably talk about that in an upcoming list. Yeah. Uh, let us know your favorite drafting games in the comments below. We'd love to hear uh, which ones you enjoy. If you like uh, using Board Game Geek, be sure to rank your favorite drafting games or all games in general because you can affect the overall rankings on Board Game Geek yeah. uh, based off of what you say about that game. Yeah, just explore around in the browse category of Board Game Geek. You can find like different mechanics, which is the lifts we are going Categories, off of was the drafting games, mechanic. Games, themes, yeah, so there's a whole bunch of stuff you can explore around and really kind of get like, oh, this is these kinds of games. It's really cool, yeah. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, if you want to see us do a particular list, whether it's a designer, publisher, theme, mechanism, or whatever, put that in the comments below. We're yeah. always keen to, to find out what you want to watch. Yeah. Uh, until next time, I'm Mike. I'm Nick. And I'm Steph. And that has been the top 10 drafting games from us. We'll see you in the next one, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.